Now, from our discussion yesterday and our discussion today, there's something that's been coming out over and over and over again. And what's that? Soul condition. Does that make sense? So remember soul condition. Remember soul condition determines your law of attraction. And soul condition also determines your spirit attractions. So therefore if you're a medium, soul condition is going to very much determine the effectiveness of your mediumship. And if you're a healer, soul condition is going to very much determine that. Does that make sense? So what we want to do now is focus on the soul condition, firstly of mediums. Now one of the major problems that most mediums have, and most mediums and psychics that you visit will have this problem, and that is the problem with humility. Just going to back this off a little. So the problem, and perhaps if you can just switch that off because that's cool. And it's a problem with humility. Now, what are the problems with humility? Well, most people who are psychics or mediums and who have developed their skills and are perhaps using their skills in a cash, on a cash basis or in using their skills maybe in a spiritualist church or something like that, the majority of them feel that they have the gift because of some special unique quality within themselves that has to do with their soul condition. And they are right. It does have something to do with the soul condition. But they then make the second assumption, and that is the assumption that I must be in really, really good soul condition if I can do something that a lot of other people cannot. And that's when mediums come to grief. So all of you who are wanting to develop your mediumship, it's very, very important for you to develop this quality of humility. Now, can you remember the definition I've given you of humility? What was it? Can you remember? The willingness to feel your feelings. Okay. Yes, a strong desire to feel your emotions. Right? A strong desire to feel and experience them. Now, for most mediums, most mediums have been developed along the New Age type of beliefs. Or, if we talk about mediums in a complete sense, there are many mediums who are called prophets in a born-again Christian sense. All right? And they are still mediums. They're the same, per same kind of person. They're channeling information from spirits through themselves to another. And the biggest problem that they face is this problem of humility. Humility will govern the type of spirits you attract. Humility will also govern the type of information you can receive. The more humble you are, the wider the variety of information you'll be able to receive. The more haughty you are, or the more um, controlling you are, or the more resistant to emotions you are, the less information you'll be able to receive. And most mediums get into this state where they believe they have this special, unique gift and they become so proud of that unique gift that they then start thinking that, that the information they are receiving is actually their own. Do you know what I mean by that? They actually start believing that all this wonderful information that's passing through them is because of them. That they just know they just know all these things about everybody. And they start feeling that they just know because it's coming from inside of themselves. And as soon as you start getting into that state as a medium, you are going to be attracting spirits who are in very low and poor conditions. The reason why is, really what is happening, remember with, with spirit communication, this is really what is happening. Here's me on the earth. My soul, my uh, spirit material bodies, right? Here's the spirit. This spirit is actually communicating, and it depends on what condition the spirit's in and what condition I am in as to how it's communicating. But for most people, this spirit is communicating 
through the spirit to material body connection, which is called the silver cord. It's communicating into this physical form, right? So what's actually happening is all of the information you're, that's coming out of your mouth, the majority of it, if not all of it, is actually not yours. It's actually the spirit who's with you. And in fact, if you're a good medium, none of the information coming out of your mouth while you're doing your mediumship will be actually yours. And when I say a good medium, a medium who's cleared their emotional condition to the point of abundance with God is a good medium. Right? And when you're at that state, nothing coming out of your mouth will be yours. Nothing will be influenced by anything inside of you when you're doing the mediumship. Now that is a very powerful state to be in, in terms of transmitting information from the spirit world to the earth. Until that point, we're going to be in various degrees of interruption to the pureness of the message, if that makes sense, depending on the condition of the spirit. So if the spirit is in the celestial spheres and I'm in the second sphere, then obviously I'm going to be modifying the information quite a lot, aren't I? But if the spirit's in the second sphere and I'm in the second sphere, then obviously there's going to be a lot more purity of information because our two conditions match a lot more. Does that make sense? But as soon as I as a medium start believing that it's all me is the reason why this is all occurring, now I'm setting up this constraint upon the spirit world that any spirit who's doing it for uh, loving purposes is probably not going to be drawn as much to me. Can you see why? Because we're not respecting where the information's coming from. How would you like to talk to, like if I talked to Brian and then Brian talked to Raya, and, and Brian then claimed that the information I gave him was his own. Right? Now, if I, I would after a while start questioning, am I going to keep talking to Brian? <laughs> Or am I just going to wait till Raya's ready and I'll just talk to her? Wouldn't I? And bypass Brian altogether because his condition is that he's modifying my information. Right? And he then is claiming it as his own. That doesn't sound very good. And then, let's say, let's add another factor into it. He's also charging her for it. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm giving it to him for free. <laughs> right? Can you see what's going on now? Like lots of different things to start getting factored in. There's a, there's, a, there's a presumption of ownership of the information when in reality the information comes from God. Yeah. So the presumption of ownership over the information gets in the way yeah. of the whole process. That's right. And that's why none of the DVDs that you're getting, none of the CDs you're getting, and none of these talks are copyrighted, and you can copy, photocopy, do whatever you want. And the reason why is because this is not mine. Does that make sense? None of it's mine. And in the end, you will come to see truth is not yours either. You, it doesn't, you don't own it. Right? Now, if a spirit's connecting with a person who's charging all the time, then this, a lot of spirits get, particularly celestial spirits, get quite upset with this process. <laughs> Can you see why? Like they're giving this information for free that they have received freely and then somebody is charging for it. Straight away that sets up a dynamic, doesn't it? Now a lot of people then argue, and on the natural love path you hear this argument a lot. You've got to have some kind of financial transaction, right, in order for people to value the information. You hear that quite a lot, right? and it's totally false, by the way, if a person doesn't value the information or they only value the information based on money, then what does that tell you about them? They're only interested in the money, in the end, aren't they? So if I put a thousand, so I'm sure if, if we said a thousand dollars a weekend, right, in the end these courses would be in high demand because everybody thinks thousand dollars must be worth a lot, you know? And this is the thing that's happened with JZ Knight, like charging five thousand dollars for the week or whatever. That's a lot of money, is it not? And then they start saying, well, if your attraction doesn't drink it in, then obviously you've got problems with your life and so forth. 
and honestly, this is not very. This is not a very honest thing to do because uh, how does a person in Africa pay five thousand U.S. dollars to learn truth? They're not. Like, they're, they're never going to see five thousand U.S. dollars if they if they live twenty lifetimes in Africa, right? Let alone one. So how can you then limit the information to them? You see, this is the problem that we have a lot of times. Now, the spirits that are attracted to that kind of processing are all going to be on the natural love path. Divine love path spirits are not going to be attracted to that. Divine love path spirits are not going to be attracted to a person who's not humble. So one of the key things that we'll be developing in you over the next 12 months, if you want to come along, is your humility. Which means we're going to be addressing this issue of your willingness to experience your own emotions. Right? And we're going to be quite confronting with that. Because without that, you don't have good mediumship, whether you believe you do or not, even if you've had it from a child. Does that make sense to everyone? Mm -hmm. 